exchange for media. With me today is one of the most proficient media planner, media professional who took up a new role in October 2021 and has not spoken much about it. So uh, with me today is Preeti Murthy, President, Group M Services India. Thanks Preeti for doing this interview with us and uh, we're very curious to understand how has this, these, these eight, ten months, nine months, nine nine months, months been and you know what exactly is the new role? Yes. Since I haven't spoken about it, can I call it the secret service of Group M? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, when I joined, it was, of course, Group M Media Services, and now it's called Nexus. Uh, this is one of the big transformation uh, agent, uh, agent of Group M, actually. Uh, to bring in more um, intelligence into the way we work and manage the media business. So it's like this, fund managers manage various funds, right? And you bring in a lot of specialization in the different type of funds. Small cap fund, mid cap fund, there'll be analysts sitting and doing each kind of that. Imagine that kind of an ecosystem and bring that into media planning. So it's non-biddable and biddable, within non-biddable is TV, print, radio, digital buys that are directly bought in and in biddable, all the biddable platforms, whether it's search, social, programmatic, comes in before it. And each of these specialized fields uh, bring in their value to the client and the integration bring in the value. What Group M did was look at the agencies and allow them to thrive on their design thinking and focus on demand generation, which is bringing in more clients and better value for clients. And what Group M Nexus is delivering to the agencies is ensuring the funds bring in the ROI, which means right media plans are delivered, right optimizations are done. And it's a team of specialists doing that job and taking away the generalist conversations in these fields. So what allows for agencies is to say that, okay, if I want to expand my e-commerce business, there's an e-com team already with all the knowledge, all the technology, all the deliverables but needed. But there would be an e-com team with that agency also, right? So all that has got come into Nexus. So what the e-com team in an agency will do is designing what, they, what is the narrative for the market and creating uh, and going and pitching to new clients and doing the demand then. So there will be two teams, one which the, that agency will have in-house and one which would be with Group M. Yes. So they'll make the first plan and perhaps for the final plan and for yes. enhancement and other things will come to you. So when are you right? joining us? <laughs> <laughs> no, so what I'm trying to understand is if you can give me a specific example, whether you don't want, you cannot, you can skip, you can name the client, you can skip, but how it has changed things on ground. So for the client, nothing has changed. Okay. So this, like I said, is the secret service, which means what? It's more a, it's an engine of group M. Mm -hmm. What we have ensured is client deliverables are enhanced and not compromised. So for the agency, it is the same team, the same face, same planners at the back end. It's just that the way the back end work has transformed. So if earlier, each agency had their implementation team. Mm -hmm. All that implementation team has come together. Mm -hmm. not compromising on clients where we have commitments. So if clients are saying this, please remember that mm -hmm. there's no compromising on that. We are we are addressing each client, each agency deliverables to their business design. And uh, if I've understood it right, every deliverable will find, eventually go through you. Yes. Yes. So we Whether are like this from whichever agency, whosoever is the client. Yes. So we work with, uh, we work for all the agencies. That is a lot of work. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's because, I mean, uh, Group M and WPB have so many agencies, so many clients, and every agency, like every client coming, going, everything going through you, yes. must be like, how big is the Nexus team? So almost a thousand this okay. year. Next year, obviously, we'll grow much more. Uh, and the good part is because we're part of Group M, infrastructure, capacity building, technology solutions, AIML solutions are built into this team which allows for non-duplication of work, which allows for efficiency in execution, uh, timeline management, because we have today a lot of B2C clients. We have today a lot of clients which need two hours tax, one hour tax. How do we make ourselves ready for that layer? I want to understand where did the need for something like this come from? So frankly, um, and this is a conversation we, had, we were having yesterday in the system was, I think somewhere the vision was set out in 2008. Uh, at that time, digital was not so big, right? And that time, the scale was not so big. Um, from then till now, there were different experiments, learnings that we had in the system. And Mindshare had led it through their CMP for 
the television side of the business, which is the uh, central media planning team and all media planning work came to one team and it went through that. So there's a lot of learnings there and a lot of AI development as well. Wavemaker, I remember, had started when I had quit at that time. And at that time, we had created an AI tool for TV planning. All this came together now. The learnings of the process, the learnings of the technology, and we have now enhanced it. Uh, the other need is very clearly for the client. You know, we want to give better efficiency. And that's what Groupon stands for, right? Efficiency, effectiveness. How do we make our system smarter and more intelligent? And this Nexus as an engine is talking about that. So uh, one of the things that I keep telling the employees who join is that this is an invincible engine of Groupon and for the agency. We are created for the agencies. To work Something for the like this existed in other countries before? It's rolled out across the globe now. Okay. Uh, at the same time? At the same time. So, uh, I also wanted to understand from you that in the last uh, few years, we have heard so much about, it started from great American resignation and then now it is now great Indian resignation and we know a lot of senior people, maybe not a lot, but a few senior people Thank left for that. <laughs> group, and, uh, the uh, WBP group also. So, uh, you know, how can something like this contribute to this whole movement of resignations and Yes. How do you retain people? So I think um, I'm part of that, right? So <laughs> I will say, okay, I quit and join another place. But what excited me taking up this role, I'll start with me and come into work with others, is a transformation agenda, right? If leaders um, feel stagnated in their transformation agenda, is when they move out or move in, whichever way you look at it. But at the same time, I don't think one should get hustled. I think we, as an industry, have a fantastic talent pool sitting here, across, not just group them, across. Um, the other reality is that instead of worrying about, oh, this team went and joined this agency and that agency, I don't get hassled. Why? Because I'm building the capability. Okay, this, this year we hired 200 people at the entry level. Next year we'll hire 350 people. I'm building capability infrastructure. So these are not pure play, uh, you know, uh, resignation countermeasures. No, it is looking ahead of the curve and looking at how do I train specialization mindset in the agencies? How do I bring in process mindset in the agencies? How do we transform our business models? And uh, a lot of uh, other um, digital ecosystems have done that. A lot of startups have done that. Hence, we have enough learnings from there too. Uh, so for me, it's a, it's a non-conversation today. And I, I to be very frank, so it has shown results. Like of course, your attrition has dropped. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Any numbers that you can give? No. percentage? <laughs> Not yet. Okay. But I'm hoping that by next year I can talk very strongly. But the reason I'm not sharing the numbers is I don't want it to be a pop okay. because we are attributing too much to this whole resignation, and we're forgetting those are sixty percent, fifty-five percent who stayed back. So if I've understood it right, now your role is more about, you know, uh, building the organization and within the organization and that meeting clients and all is no more part of your current profile, right? Do you miss it? Actually, I don't uh, miss it because I keep meeting them any which ways all my old clients. Uh, the challenges are redefined and I guess I'm fine with it because uh, the excitement of pitching something and, you know, and the waiting for the so result. When you've, done, when you've done, so waiting for the result is still exciting because we do it together. Okay. Um, I'm not running these operations alone. All the agency heads are stakeholders, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's Avni, Ajay, Sonali, Moshmi, Navi, um, and the trading head, Siddharth Parasha is moving out, Ashwin. Mm -hmm. We are all partners in crime, right? So we are not alone or isolated. What I will, what our roles are very different. Hence, it's a joint success and a combined excitement. Um, after doing pitches for that many years, <laughs> I wouldn't complain. It's an ice break. <laughs> I would say it's an ice break, but it's a different challenge because instead of a pitch, I'm creating a technology solution that's never been addressed or done before. So that result is the excitement that I get, right? And then how do we land it for a client? That's the excitement that we have. So it's a different excitement. And... Um, uh, the pitch language, if, you are, if I'm working with the agencies to change the pitch language or uh, the way we are delivering it to clients, I think that's good enough. 
Uh, this is the last question. You know, I remember speaking to some of uh, your uh, colleagues and uh, they told me that uh, it's, it's become a very big problem for this entire industry to uh, retain talent in the sense that uh, a lot of people are not interested in doing television. Uh, everyone wants to do only digital because, you know, digital has grown uh, by 60%. But, you know, television is still a reality and it exists. So would you agree with it? And you know, how do you resolve that? Because uh, they said that the, the entire younger lot, the, the 200 people that you hire or whatever, so these younger people are not interested in doing television at all. 50% of them are all on television because we've, to, we've transformed the way television is being looked at as well. There's also addressable TV, right? Like Pinecast is one of our uh, solutions for that. And uh, the way you plan for the television has now uh, at one end, you have the target audience or demographic conversation, but now it's moving into audience planning. How do we get both these audiences together? How that layer up? How the reach conversations change? And, um, you know, the truth is this generation, like you said, is the gaming generation, right? For them, everything is about a technology solution, platform solution. And that's what exactly we have done in the television world. We have created an AI solution where the planner is not seeing it as how it used to be when I did plan. It's an AI product. It's an intelligent product. You work with the product, uh, the tool or the platform to bring out TV plans. A planner who used to take two, two days to make a plan can do eight plans in half a day. So life is different. So you focus your energies on learning newer skills and audience understanding and technology solution. Now that you've been working, this is, this is actually last. <laughs> so now that you've been working so closely with all these WPP agencies, what are some of the things that excite you about the future of this industry? I think uh, the fact that the pace of transformation and adoption is so good and so fast and we are not sitting with the laurels of the past. I think that's what excites me. Second is uh, investment into technology. That's um, quite aggressive. Uh, and the third is the kind of acquisitions that's happening, which allows us to um, leapfrog ahead Faster. Do you want to talk about the acquisitions? A few, whatever you would have seen in the oh, news. And there are more coming. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Preeti. Thank you so much for talking to Thank us. Thank you so much. Thanks.